I'm really excited to be here today with Dr. Dave Stukas. He's a pediatric allergist and the social media editor and host of the podcast for the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Dr. Stukas, thanks so much for being here with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. During the last decade, there's been a lot of advances in asthma treatment. There's been combination inhalers. There's been new biological treatments that are injectables um, that modulate the immune system and, you know, everything in between. At this point for you, or I guess for the asthma community at large, what does an asthma moonshot look like? So what are the areas that we still need to explore and really where does the science still need to go? Yeah, well, before I answer that question, I just want to emphasize what you said. These are very exciting times. Uh, there's really no reason why we can't get any individual patient under control if they have poorly controlled or severe asthma. We have so many options available, including, you know, those that are tailored towards specific what we call phenotypes or subtypes of asthma. So and now it's not just, you know, diagnosing somebody with asthma. It's what type of asthma, what type of inflammation do they have, what types of symptoms do they have, what are the triggers and, and how can we tailor therapy? So that's where we are right now. As far as the moonshots, well, it would be great if we had a cure for asthma. Um, I think, you know, that would be something that would be amazing. As of right now, we have very effective treatments that can help people, you know, get people under better control and prevent exacerbations and treat exacerbations when they occur. But we don't have that, that cure that, you know, can put somebody into lifelong remission. Um, another nice area that would be available, hopefully in the near future would be, you know, a lot of these treatments are given either every day, twice a day, or with the biologics, it's going to be once a month or every couple of months. Well, can we get to the point where maybe we can, you know, spray space these treatments out where somebody gets their treatment once every six months, perhaps, uh, especially for those that are given by an injection or a shot that might make it a lot more feasible long term. That's something that we're not able to offer at this point. But I think if we were able to find that cure for asthma, that would be a game changer. I don't know if that's going to happen in my lifetime, just because it's so such a complicated uh, chronic health condition, but that would be amazing. Uh, but maybe if some of these treatments can just be uh, a little easier to use from a scheduling standpoint and adherence standpoint, that might be the next step that we can take, hopefully. Yeah, and I think um, with asthma, we've just been really lucky to have such great innovation, such great treatments that have all been made mostly available um, to patients. So it's really kind of a matter of access as well right now. Oh, yes. And, you know, to, to be honest with you, do you want the, the biggest moonshot of all? If we can get our insurance companies to cover all these medications and, and stop having to fight with them, because, you know, oftentimes we know what the best treatment is for each individual patient, but it's not always covered by the insurance. And that's just such a huge barrier to care. Yep, we're going with no prior authorizations for the moonshot. Yeah. <laughs>